Um, so brain freeze is like that headache that you get, like you right. know, right around the, the frontal part, right here, or right around your temples. I think I think anybody who's had ice cream fast and I'm guilty of that <laughs> knows that that is absolutely true. Yeah, so Hey guys, this is Kimon Beckles. Welcome to another episode of uh, Brain Buzz. Uh, I'm here with my co-host, Jason Wallen. Hey, Jay, hello, how hello. you doing? How's Good. it going? So today we're going to go a little different, and uh, we will um, uh, dive into some of the biggest myths about the brain and neurology and try to see if uh, they are true or false. Yeah, a little Mythbuster episode. Um, if you ever watch that show, um, they take a... The premise is, is they take an idea that people believe to be true and they myth bust it. Very good. So we're going to kind of do that very a little quickly. Um, there's some common neuro myths. All right. Let's see what you got. All right. So the first one um, is a, a common one you see in movies and TV shows. It is that we only use 10% of our brain. Right. That is busted. Uh, so that's really not true. Um, we utilize a, the entirety of our brain. Now, mm -hmm. there are some areas that through research that's been done by stimulating these parts of the brain, typically during surgery, uh, awake sur surgery in the past, we've realized that parts of the brain are responsible for things that we can easily measure, right? Like movement in your arm or speech or things that we can measure and perceive. But there's other parts of the brain that have more of an integrative function, meaning they connect areas of the brain and help them work together or they serve higher integrative function processing and and understanding and emotion and and other my memory more complex uh, functions storing memories possibly so so the the brain itself uh, is not as compartment compartmentalized as we like to think it doesn't really uh, it's not really part of distinct areas with a bunch of nothing in between mm -hmm. everything works together at the same time and um, this has been uh, you know disproven multiple times including during brain scans like functional MRIs or PET scans that show us that the whole brain is really working even when uh, when somebody uh, is sleeping that's 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 uh it's i guess it's comforting to know that we're that we're not walking around in a 10 percent capacity no. um but that that's we see this a lot we saw it in uh lucy the movie with mm -hmm. scarlett johansson um where she got something happened to her and she was unlocking parts of her brain and, and then when she hit 100 percent, she was like all oh, omnipotent and uh, it's, uh, it, it's all unlocked <laughs> and limitless um which was a really good one with bradley cooper okay. uh, where they, they took a pill and it and it unlocked everybody's looking for that magic fix <laughs> to, to make it, it smarter. It, it is a good idea, but unfortunately, not true. Yeah. Uh, our next one um, kind of almost coincides with it. It's the left brain versus right brain argument. Um, a lot of times you'll see, you know, they have apps or like little tests that you can do to see if you're left brain or right brain. Of course, left brain, they would say you're more logical, right brain more creative. Not true. Busted. <laughs> so... Um, that's definitely not true. So the only distinction between the two hemispheres of the brain that, of course, they work together um, has to do uh, with speech, uh, producing speech, and the ability to understand speech. Uh, and uh, most of the time that happens from the left side of your brain. Mm -hmm. uh, in um, in right-handed people, it almost exclusively happens from the left side of the brain. In left-handed people, uh, it can happen both either from the right or from the left side of the brain. Uh, but in right-sided people, it almost exclusively happens on the left side of the brain, and that's uh, that's our speech function. Uh, and also, uh, in terms of movement, the right side of the brain tends to control movement on the left side of the body, and the left side of the brain tends to control movement on the right side of the body. Uh, but uh, in reality, when it comes to creativity um, or other high integrative functions, like we said before, the the brain works together, both hemispheres work together. And produce an and produce an outcome. So there is really no um, uh, increased uh, function of one side of the brain uh, in some folks and less in some others when it comes to things like creativity or um, uh, 
um, or other higher functions. Mm. All right, so that was busted. Um, so the next one, we, we, we know the answer, I think we've talked about, but yeah. it's a common misconception. Um, strokes only happen to old people. Yeah, no, that, that's definitely not the case. Um, and it's something for the public to know. It's very useful because, of course, when somebody who's not in the typical age group develops stroke-like symptoms, mm -hmm. you need to treat it the same way and you need to be aggressive about getting them to care because you can really change their outcome. Of course, you know, we deal with strokes every day. That's our job. Mm -hmm. And we see patients, uh, you know, as young as, um, you know, children, uh, all the way to uh, elderly uh, patients develop strokes. Uh, of course, the truth is that strokes tend to happen more frequently in older patients, and that's kind of a, the result of those risk factors that result that can cause a stroke accumulating over time and having this cumulative effect on your body. So, of course, it takes a little bit of time, but um, that does not necessarily, you know, there's other conditions that can cause a stroke, and strokes can happen at any age. Um, so, I think infants is, is the most shocking that people will oh, have absolutely. a hard time processing. Yeah, there's infants. I mean, that, that that's generally genetically related, but but certainly uh, mm -hmm. there's there's no lower age limit. So busted. Busted. Our next one, um, and actually this, uh, we have a personal experience with this one, um, that a concussion is just a minor bump and you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Oh, right, that's really not the case. Busted. So, uh, <laughs> so the, the the truth is, concussions need to be taken very, very seriously, um, and uh, the reason is, you know, there's no there's no measurable way to identify severity of concussion, other than, of course, some scales that we have. But there's no test that we can do. There's no MRI. There's no mm -hmm. EEG that we can do where we can say this concussion is more severe than that one. By definition, a concussion is uh, not demonstrating any signs of change in the brain. So mm -hmm. it's the acceleration, deceleration that can happen and can cause micro injuries in the insulation of, of, um, of, the, of the nerves. So there, there is really, um, you, you cannot really ignore concussions. They have a cumulative effect over time and certainly when multiple can happen in a short period of time, that can have a dramatic impact on the brain with uh, sometimes appreciable injury. And I think you said personal experience because we had the podcast here uh, on, uh, on on concussions and boxing, right? Is that that and my my son recently? Oh. Um, I had reached out you you uh, right. I right, reached right. out to you personally because right. uh, my my son had, had taken a, one to the head. And I was kind of like the uh, rub some dirt on it and walk it off. And my wife was a little bit more motherly. I, d I didn't think you'll go personal on this one. <laughs> no, no. I mean, why not? Um, uh, but you had said, you know, you were also feared not of just concussions, but of, of uh, some bleeding um, could, could also have occurred because he was really like a little bit uh, loopy. He was messing around with his friends. Right. And uh, yeah. So, I mean, it's definitely something that you, you should take serious. Um, so I learned that the hard way. Right. Because um, right. we had to get, he had to get, you know, get a CAT scan, get cleared for that and stuff like that. So. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> there are some advantages to having uh, friends, friends in high places. Um, <laughs> or low places, depending <laughs> on your perspective. That too. Um, so our next, uh, our next myth is that brain cells don't regenerate. Once you lose them, they're gone forever. Yeah, so so that's an interesting one. I would say yes and no. Mm -hmm. um, traditional thinking is that brain cells never regenerate, and and that's mostly true. Um, you know, once you lose, once you have a stroke, um, you really lose that part of your brain, um, and that applies to adults. Of course, in children, you might have a little more possibility for regeneration. So two things happen when you lose brain cells. One is plasticity, which means the brain adapts and changes in an effort to serve the functions that are lost. And so that's one way where you, mm. um, you, you find ways to, to complement what you've lost. The other way is that memory and the way memory works, there are new evidence that you might have some, some level of neurogenesis, some level of creating new neurons to serve the purpose of uh, uh, building new memories and and uh, um, and understanding reality. However, I think our knowledge of that is rudimentary, and we still don't really fully understand that area. Mm. 
So part partly true, partly busted. That's right. Uh, if someone is in a coma, they can't hear you. Uh, I'd, I would I would say that's not necessarily true. I would I would give this a partially busted grade all, mm. also. Um, it depends on how deep they are, and it depends on the type of coma, right? So there's so many different uh, conditions that fall into this coma category, and it can be a medically induced coma where you put pa patients on medications to keep their mental status low. Mm -hmm. And in those cases, depending on the medications you use, some patients might hear things or respond to sounds or their body might respond to familiar sounds. Um, or it can be a coma that's secondary to brain injury or trauma. And in those cases, um, I guess depending on the type of injury, um, you might have different responses and you might be able to hear. And there's definitely, there's definitely um, accounts of, of, uh, of people remembering conversations while they were in a coma. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so I would say that probably partially busted. Okay. Yeah, we see in movies a lot, you know, when they when they talk to somebody in a coma and they're like, oh, I remember everything. I heard yeah, I thought that's highly unlikely. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can get brain freeze from eating ice cream too fast. This is, a, you know, a little silly one. Yeah, well, define bra brain freeze for me. Um, so brain freeze is like that headache that you get, like you right. know, right around the, the frontal part, right here, or right around your temples. I think I think anybody who's had ice cream fast, and I'm guilty of that, <laughs> knows that that is absolutely true. Yes, it happens. So all the, time. Uh, the reason for that is, of course, you have a a very um, uh, very cold liquid that enters your mouth, um, sensation from your palate and the top part um, of of your um, of your mouth uh, gets transmitted uh, towards the skull. There's a lot of arteries in that area. There's a lot of connections, and uh, there's a lot of referred sensation that happens from nerves, and so you can feel that cold all mm -hmm. the way up into your brain. That is absolutely the case. The brain does not freeze, of course. It's just a sensation, and we've all been victims to that. And uh, and, uh, and a, a little uh, cure for that is to hold your tongue up against your palate or the, or the roof of your mouth, in order to warm it back up. Or to eat slower. Or to oh, eat slower. Nobody can do that. <laughs> um, this one is, uh, bigger brains mean more intelligence. Absolutely not. So size doesn't matter. Not for the brain. So uh, <laughs> uh, that was believed to be true a long, long time ago. And, um, you know, after a lot of... Um, uh, anatomic studies and, and forensic studies, it was determined that does not really uh, that's not really the case, um, including you know Einstein's brain, who's in your beloved city mm. of Philadelphia. Um, Go birds! <laughs> it was it was not um, in terms of size. It wasn't out of the ordinary. So size really doesn't matter when it comes to uh, the brain, but uh, it's other. Things that have to do with higher function. Yeah, and I guess the one of the most, uh, I guess the easiest way to, to see that too is the animal kingdom. You right. know, you have animals that have larger brains than us based upon their size, right. and they're not like whales. Know, they're, they're not yeah. solving. Uh, nope. The theorem, you know, they're not really out there. Quantum doing theory is not coming from them. <laughs> no, nope. no, absolutely not. Um, what else you got? Uh, smart people have more wrinkles in their brain. You hear this a lot of times in the in movies and TV shows. Yeah, that's not true either Busted. and i think <laughs> i think by wrinkles they probably mean folds the, the gyri the folds yeah. of the brain um no that's that's not the case uh, those largely um you know develop before birth they're not really associated with intelligence um not the case so wrinkly brain even though our our lovely logo has a lot of wrinkles it's not the smartest yeah, no, no um, it's a beautiful wrinkly brain but no, <laughs> that not. it is um alcohol kills brain cells Permanently, um, I guess this is a. I know this is an area that we kind of talked about before. Yeah, so so it it, I I would say, partially true, partially not. It, al alcohol has a detrimental effect on the brain. No mm -hmm. matter how much you control, how much how much you consume, you consume a little bit or you consume a lot, regardless of how much you consume, every time you do it, you have an impact on the brain. And uh, that impact can be small, like you know, losing and interfering with the development of new connections in the brain, um, to um, sometimes even affecting the ability of brain cells 
to adequately communicate. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, if you're of, a, of an alcohol level high enough to destroy brain cells, um, we're talking a really high alcohol level. Mm -hmm. And also we're talking chronic alcohol use, alcoholism. Say alcoholism, yeah. In those cases, yes, you can have substantial uh, loss of brain tissue and, and death of brain cells. But, uh, you know, um, I'd say everything is good in moderation. You know, wh when it comes to alcohol, you just do it understanding that you are affecting your brain function no matter what. Yeah, I know. You, your stance on alcohol, I, 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 I get a lot of feedback from that. Um, yeah. It's unfortunate because people... <laughs> I like to drink. Yeah, yeah I mean... Uh, um, you know, I, it I, ca I care about the brain. Um, listening to like Mozart or I guess maybe classical music uh, makes you smarter. I mean, a lot of people believe this with children. You know, Absolutely that's not. Busted. If you like classical music, knock yourself out. If you don't, it doesn't affect your brain. Single Is there any music that makes you dumber by listening to it? <laughs> 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 that's a question. I and I would I, resort to some of the new I, music I've been hearing. I plead the fifth. Go to the next one. <laughs> so that myth is busted. Um, you can uh, trick a lie detector by controlling your breathing. Uh, really, you know, I I really don't know. You know, it's not really. Uh, I'm not an expert in the lie detector, so mm -hmm. I guess I shouldn't really be taking one and try to cheat on it. But uh, I, I I don't know. Uh, I would I would think that it would be really tough because because uh, uh, um, lie detectors tend to, um, you know, of course, check your breathing, check your heart rate, check yes. your kind of bodily visceral reactions. It would seem to me that it would be really tough to control all those. Well, I, I don't know that'd be impossible, but uh, but certainly very hard. But not an expert, so I, I'm going to leave this one. No, I mean, I mean that's why I, with like lie detectors, a lot of courts don't find them uh, admissible, things like that, because yeah. they're unreliable. Um, I, I think if you're nervous to begin with and you're sitting there, you know, some people can't take a test. Right. So now you're taking a test on, on, on something that could determine a lot. So I think that, right. that, could, that could skew it. Um, so that's it for the majority of them. Now we just have a couple quick true or falses, I guess. Yeah. Um, that just do with, you know, they, they coincide with some neuro, um, some, some, some things that you hear. Reading in a dark uh, in the dark ruins your eyesight. False. Um, caffeine stunts brain development. False, although I don't drink coffee. <laughs> no alcohol, no coffee. Nah. Fun date. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Cheap date. Um, brain training games make you smarter. Neither true nor false. Depends on the game. I was going to say, because there are some games that I mean, a lot of people in support group and stuff like that say help with yeah. memory, but it doesn't make them smarter necessarily. Um, you can rewire your brain with meditation. Yeah. Yeah, I guess just the way you think and, and changing your, yeah, your things. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's that's the, the most of it. Um, Super. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this segment. Uh, and if you did, let us know. Like and subscribe our video uh, to our video. And uh, we'll do another one if that's of interest to you. Thank you. And we'll see you again in another video. Take care.